Hey, what's going on, everybody? Scott Newby here with Friday Night AV and Living It with Scott Cat Podcast. I'm working on these little mini episodes as part of a series where we're discussing certain things like tactile transducers, subwoofers, movies, music, whether it be clips or full movies. And we're literally, what we're doing is we're taking a lot of questions that we're getting from the community and trying to answer them in these little mini 10 or 15 minute episodes. Just something trying to get back to the community, try to get some answers from just my point of view and my experiences. And then, uh, you know, we still have industry leaders coming on talking about scientific stuff and, you know, from a technical point of view. Um, but it, just work on these little episodes for, you know, just for answering questions. So I still got one that I'm working on for tactile transducers, very near field subwoofers. I've been promising you guys that for a while. Certainly going to be pumping that out here pretty soon. So let's dig in. So um, today's Friday the 13th, Tuesday the Friday the 13th. Of course, I won't be doing any of this without our subscribers, our Patreon members, just the awesome community that's been supporting us. Um, love chatting, love hanging out with you guys on all our live podcasts. So certainly, uh, certainly appreciating that. So tonight, what we're addressing, or what we, I say we, what I'm addressing is um, Dolby Atmos. We get asked a lot. Um, you know, don't exactly understand Dolby Atmos, haven't experienced Dolby Atmos. A lot of get-togethers that we have, part of the reason, I mean, a lot of people want to come over to check out like a JVC projector, check out JTR speakers, or check out an Anthem processor. Um, uh, but it's a good amount of people um, want to check out Atmos. They haven't experienced Atmos, or if they have, it hasn't been a proper setup, or they didn't like it, and they want to try a different Atmos setup. So we... I get asked often, um, what are my honest feelings on Atmos? I've had a few different Atmos setups and um, just kind of share my thoughts. So I pretty much, um, like I did with the subwoofer one, just going to go through like the, the top seven. Every, every day I'm chatting with somebody about something. So I just kind of, as people ask good questions, I'll, I'll just jot them down. I'm a trusty notebook. So um, then I just try to answer because I figure if a couple of people got that question, then probably maybe a lot of people have it. And I can just give my opinion from just be, being around the stuff for a while. So um, my personal thoughts on Dolby Atmos is I'm, I'm a big fan. This is the th third setup that I've had that incorporates it. Very immersive when done correctly. Um, some movies are certainly better than others. So um but overall, I'm, I'm a big fan. So if you're not going to watch the whole video and we're just looking for my opinion, definitely two thumbs up for Dolby Atmos. Um, we certainly enjoy it with our movie viewing. So we'll go through the set, the checklist, seven lists. Like I said, be hanging out here for about 10 or 15 minutes. So first thing is I've noticed a lot is a lot of people haven't heard or experienced Dolby Atmos. And pretty much they like we don't even understand what it is. Well, it takes your, you know, your original seven channel surround sound, makes it much more immersive by adding overhead effects, panning from front to back. Um, more common to have two or four. Now, a lot of people are even doing six, which works really well, you know, if you got multiple row seatings or if you got a big room. Um, in our theater, we do four, two slightly in front of us, two slightly behind us. And um, they're not always active, but depending on the movie, they, they can see a lot of action. And if I had to guess, they, they add 10 or 15% to a movie, which at this stage of the game, getting a nice immersive effect is certainly very welcomed. Planes go by, a bird flies by. Um, it just makes the experience much more believable. And, you know, that's why we all kind of do surround sound and is because we want to be tied into the movie and kind of lose ourselves for a while. Um, you can add Dolby Atmos to, uh, you know, an expensive setup, a cheaper setup. I mean, as long as you can place the speakers really close to where they need to be and, you know, they're they're powered properly and calibration is done properly and you can kind of sync it in with the rest of your system. It's a very seamless um, bubble and you're sitting in the middle of the bubble and you kind of feel like everything's going on around you. So um, instead of, um, you know, your regular surround sound is just pretty much you know, at your ear level all around and everything is happening around you, that most puts that, that top on the dome for you. So uh, it, it, it's certainly very enjoyable when done correctly. Um, so 
that moves me right into my second question. Um, I've heard some Dolby Atmos and it wasn't very good. And I've experienced, um, well, this person that wrote this question, I actually completely agree with this. Um, I tried the upfiring Klipsch modules, which is, isn't none against Clips. Clips was the same one I tried, which I believe was one of the, the better offerings. Um, and I wasn't impressed with Atmos at all. And I wrote that person back personally and I said, well, don't give up on Atmos because you had a bad, ex bad experience with the upfiring modules um, because I did as well too. Um, when Atmos pretty much first got released years ago, I bought an Onkyo receiver that supported it. I didn't want to invest a bunch of money into a really nice setup because I didn't know if I was, I didn't know if it was just going to be hype or if it was going to stick around. So I did, I just, I had the THX Ultra set up at that time, but I didn't have a receiver that supported Atmos. So when it came out, I picked up an Onkyo receiver. I think it was for like maybe eight or 900 bucks, one of their mid or upper lower tier receivers in the Klipsch up firing modules that I could just incorporate with the Klipsch THX Ultra series that I had. And I bought a player that would support it. And I started buying 4k movies that would support it. And, um, I was, uh, I was very underwhelmed. Now with the up firing modules, they shoot against your ceiling as like a V effect. And that comes back. So it goes up and then back down towards you. Um, I certainly heard some stuff, Sometimes I was kind of confused, actually, on what I was hearing and why I was hearing it. And sometimes it seemed kind of delayed or just not very believable. It, it, it seemed to me at that time just be very gimmicky. I, I'm not going to lie and say it didn't add something to it, but it wasn't always a, a positive addition in, in my experience. Um, other people have used them and loved them. And, 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 you know, maybe they had better luck or better they their receiver handled it better at that time. Um, but yeah, it certainly wasn't very believable for me. So I kind of chalked it up as a loss at that moment. And then probably three or four months later after that, I experienced a system with nice in ceiling speakers. Um, and it was a complete different experience for me. And then I automatically knew after experiencing at a buddy's house, I had to go home and cut the seat, you know, because nobody wants to have to cut holes in their ceiling and run wires through their attic or, th you know, through their ceiling and do stuff like that if they absolutely don't have to. But after experiencing it at his house, I certainly knew that I had to. And I did. And then I bought some decent Klipsch in ceilings to go with the Klipsch floor speakers that I had. Um, I did four of them right in front of the seating, right behind the seating. And then um, re ran still with the same Ankyo receiver at that time. And uh, fired up the same movies that I really didn't care with that most. And it was certainly a lot better experience. Um, so for me, in ceiling was 100% better experience. It really changed my mind from I, I could care less if I have Atmos or not to I, I certainly want to experience every movie I can in Atmos. That's, that's how much of a difference. Then I, I quickly sold the up firing modules. Um, even though I did test a couple times the same movie clips, I would just use the up-firing modules, then I would just switch back to the floor and ceilings, and it, it was it was not even anywhere near being comparable. So um, just wanted to share that. Those are just my honest opinions. I made a financial mistake and wasted some time in the beginning, and up selling them, you know, obviously at a lower cost than when I bought them, waste some of my time. But, you know, that's unfortunately, that's the only way we learn sometimes. So, um, all right, on to the next question. Um, yes, should my in-ceiling speakers be of the same quality as the rest of my speakers? Um, I mean, if you have really good, like, left and right speakers because you two-channel and stuff, too, um, and you have, you know, nice speakers all the way around, I mean, I would say that your in-ceiling should be at least somewhat comparable to your surrounds and maybe your center channel. I know some people just have really nice left and right, like super nice. And then they just do a really good center and surround speakers um, because they two channel and multitask, you know, with multi-channel audio or with Atmos or surround sound. Um, some people use all the same speakers on every channel, which is, is certainly ideal in a lot of situations. Um, 
I would say that if your in ceilings are at least as comparable to your surrounds and stuff like that, then you're pretty set to go. Um, I've noticed, it, and I've just been honest with buddies of mine that have gone to Atmos route and not super pleased or feel like they're going to blow their Atmos speakers is because they got pretty nice setups, but then they went with some really cheap on walls or in ceilings and they sound like they're overdriven or even harsh or screechy. When stuff flies by at high volumes, it sounds kind of screechy or strained. Um, yeah, it, it's certainly worth investing a few bucks. And I mean, I, I, I don't think that you need multi-thousand dollar in ceilings by any means, but it's it's certainly worth some kind of investment. Currently in this room that I'm in my theater, I'm using Eclipse Pro in ceiling 8-inch and those are getting changed over to the, the JTR HT 110s like I just did for the surrounds. Um, but those will be going on, on ceiling or, or maybe when I redo, redo my whole ceiling, I mount them in the ceiling. I am not exactly sure on that yet, but uh, it's certainly it's certainly worth doing a, a very decent Atmos speaker. Thousands of dollars, no, um, but certainly, certainly something not just the cheapest thing you can find. So. All right, guys. Sorry, my computer keeps telling me I'm running along better. Um, so here we go again. Um, content matters. Yes, definitely. There's some movies where you'll notice like, oh, man, I, I, I don't hear the in ceilings at all. Some people choose to do up mixers, um, which I've experienced very good up mixing on some where it just activates all channels all the time. I've experienced other times where I'm like, uh, it seems like a little too much. So I think it's very movie dependent. Um, some movies just certainly just sound really good and at most they, they use it very tastefully and at the correct times you can tell that they're not trying to overdo it or oversell it that it's just very appropriate for whatever is going on on the screen so um yes content 100 matters i mean content matters with our music listening with our movie watching and certainly with the addition of atmos that content will matter one movie that you watch, you'd be like, why did I buy these Atmos speakers? They're not adding anything to this. And the next movie you watch, it's complete night day difference. Um, so certainly content does matter. Yes. Um, so up mixing. So somebody wrote in the comments when I made that post, I, oh, I up mix a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, I up mix some things, some things I don't. I just enjoy the native. Um, because like I said, some things you outmix and it seems like it can be a lot or too much or kind of confusing. Other things, it, it certainly adds to it. So I, I just do it to taste and everybody's taste a little different. It's a hobby. You're not doing it wrong. If you're enjoying yourself, then you're, you know, you're doing your due diligence to the hobby. Um, somebody says physical disc versus streaming. Um, certainly, and, and this I don't know. This is kind of crazy because if you watch something on streaming, which we watch little streaming down here, if it isn't a, like a blockbuster hit or something or an action movie, if it's just something we want to run on like Apple TV or something like that, then we'll watch it in a the theater. And usually the sound is very good. Um, it could be immersive if it's a movie with decent Atmos. And even if you watch an action movie that you haven't either seen yet, or that you haven't watched in a long time and you lost your memory of how good it sounds on disc that when you watch it on streaming, it can actually be very enjoyable. So, um, yeah, I, I just, unless you're going to watch the disc right after the streaming, because we did that on a couple of movies. We watched some um, like Transformers on streaming and the Atmos was actually pretty decent. And then we immediately went to the disc and we're like, oh, the bass is quite a bit better, and the Atmos is quite a bit better. Everything is quite a bit better. So streaming has definitely came a long way in the last couple of years. And if you don't have an exact hard copy to compare it to, a lot of the streaming is actually very enjoyable, unless you're going to watch the hard movie right afterwards. I'm still, um, for me, I mean, I just feel like physical discs or something like a K-scape or something that you've ripped, you know, bit for bit. You know, to get everything you absolutely can out of your system, I'm certainly a big advocate for that. But you can still have a good time with streaming. Um, and the last point I just want to bring up is, what do people think that come over that experience the Atmos? And this is very fresh in my memory because three days ago, I just had some guys come over like a four or five. Hey, sorry about that, guys. 
my laptop died, so hopefully there was only a couple of seconds of pause or strangeness there, um, which was my own fault. It was warning me, and I didn't have it plugged in. So my, my last point I was going to bring up is that um, I just had some guys over here from the Car Audio Club. Um, that's, that's Like I said, they're like a four- or five-hour drive for me. And the guys get in the home audio too, but certainly get in heavy into sound quality and like um, competitions for car audio. And so they, they came over because they wanted to experience loud system in a house. And um, the one, well, the, the guys, the one guy that has a pretty decent uh, home theater in his house, he said, well, I don't even have Atmos yet, you know, but I got a really nice setup, you know, for home, th home theater. And we watched some movie clips, and at the end, he's like, "Man, that was pretty impressive." He goes, uh, "He goes, I, I didn't think Dolby Atmos would make that much of a difference." He goes, "I was super impressed with my system at my house, but uh, I felt very drawn in." And he's like, "As we were watching parts of a fighter jet fighter plane, he goes, I felt like I was in the cockpit and everything going on above me." He goes, "I've, I've never felt that way during a movie before." He goes, so that was, he goes, man, that was a like a real nice addition to a movie. He goes, I, I'm certainly all, all for Dolby Atmos. Um, so it's it certainly, if you experience it and you experience it, that it's been calibrated, done right, set up right. Um, I, I honestly believe that you'll be happy with that addition to your theater setup. So um, don't overlook it. Do some more research. See how it'll fit in your room. Um it could be done like not for a lot of money either. You know, a lot of receivers support it now and even power it. Um, you know, a lot of guys that I see buying receivers that have pre outs so they can power, you know, they buy external amplifiers to power like their main five or seven speakers and still let their receiver just keep all its power and power their Atmos speakers. Um, or if you're not trying to do a big crazy step, if you can do like a 5.2 five channel surround with two overhead, you know, if it's a smaller setup, people having, you know, good, good experiences with that. Just saying that it's certainly worth making that extra step and that extra effort to, <clears throat> to get into the Dolby Atmos. And you can even enjoy it with streaming. If you're against physical meter, or you don't want to spend that, the money on that. There are some, you, there are still good Atmos mixes with streaming. Um, the best mixes, no, but certainly some some decent ones you'll that you'll enjoy if you're big into streaming and you're big into home theater. You can uh, certainly have a very good time with that most on that too. So, uh, like always, guys, I appreciate you guys taking you know 20 minutes out of your day to hang out with me, check out what I got to say, ask me questions. You know, just uh, love the back and forth of this hobby, making friends, and uh, having a good time with all this. So, um, we'll catch you guys on the next live. I'm still working on this little mini series. Like I said, we got a, quite a few things still to nail down. But uh, for now, this one's done. You guys have a good night, and I'll see you guys later.